time of year again. Dr. Frank Mislick is here to help us navigate this year's cold and flu season. Hey, Dr. Frank. Hey, Mary. How's it going? How are you? I'm doing pretty well. I'm feeling better. I'm not gonna lie. I did have that little flu for a minute. Oh, no. I needed to, I actually called you, didn't I? You did call yes, me. Yeah. <laughs> so you know the answer. So you, why don't you tell me about Oh, yeah, I'm, yeah, gonna, yeah. I'm gonna do this yeah, segment. Yeah, we'll roll reversal yeah. here. <laughs> Uh, no, it is that time of the year because as an eMERGE doc, we see it a lot, yeah. right? So the cold and flu, people come in with fevers and coughs. Mm -hmm. So I, I think today it'd be nice to kind of unpack that and see what we can do to help patients. I right? love that idea. Okay, so there's just so many kind of similar symptoms between a cold and a flu. Can mm -hmm. you kind of kind of talk about the similarities and differences there? Yeah, so a cold or the common cold, as we know it, is a self-limiting virus. Mm -hmm. It's actually got a whole bunch of different types of viruses. Mm -hmm. Adenovirus, rhinovirus, RSV, and it's not important you remember that, mm -hmm. but all of those kind of run their course. They're very mild in nature. Mm -hmm. You have a cough, you may have a fever, but not always. Mm -hmm. Congestion, stuffy nose, mucus, all those fun things. Mm. Whereas the flu is caused by a specific uh, virus. Mm -hmm. It's actually caused by influenza. Mm. And do you know why it's called the flu? Because of influenza. Influenza. There you go. There you go. Yeah. We could have just called it Enza. Well, oh, I didn't. I didn't invent it yeah, back yeah. in the day. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and it's a bit more severe, I guess. What you call it? Mm -hmm. You get a fever quite often. That's where you get the vomiting, the nausea, the chills, mm -hmm. and it can feel more intense, but also last a lot less time. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the way to pull those apart. Mm -hmm. But the real way to look at it is they're both viral in nature. Okay, both viral. Now, speaking of another virus that I think we're all very familiar with. Which one's that? Uh, I think it, I think it's called COVID. Oh, yeah, 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 I yeah. heard about that one. Yeah. So COVID, another virus, and it's. Mm -hmm got a lot of attention. There's actually different strains of the coronavirus, but yeah. at the end of the day, COVID, I don't need to, I think, berate that one too mm -hmm, much. Mm -hmm. Cough, fever, shortness of breath. Yeah. And so when you look at them all kind of side by side, mm -hmm. there's some overlap, some are sometimes, some are always. Mm -hmm. and, and the way to look at it though is they're all viral. Okay. And so can you tell the difference? Sometimes, mm -hmm. I think if you have a fever, more likely you lead into the flu mm -hmm. and COVID. But the real way to tell is you can do a home test for COVID, mm -hmm. ruling that out. You mm -hmm. can by proxy kind of assume you have the others. Okay. If you come to the hospital and need to be, say, admitted, we mm -hmm. sometimes do viral panels and which can actually kind of pull that apart more yeah but we don't do it routinely for like outpatients so yes. really it's all about supportive care for those at the end of the day so, so you're talking about like the supportive care of things at home that we can kind of do yeah that's right yeah, yeah. so that's the big thing and I think a lot of the time for the fevers you can treat that with like Tylenol and Advil mm -hmm. that can help break the fever mm -hmm. staying hydrated it's the most important thing too okay right on now we're gonna back uh, get into that a little bit later but I wanted to talk about pneumonia because oh. I feel like there's a real big upswing or maybe it's just more in the news that and walking pneumonia yeah, yeah, so yeah. pneumonia, as we know it, mm -hmm. um, is derives from actually the Greek word pneumon. And pneumon. Yeah, means lung, okay. and yeah, being disease. Mm -hmm. Fun fact, I bring that out at parties all the time. That is a very cool yeah. fact. That's like gonna make you friends yeah, at parties. I know, it makes yeah. me a ton of one yeah. fact. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, uh, but at the end of the day, that basically uh, involves like an infection of the lung. Okay. And so you have these little uh, gas-filled sacs in your lung. There's a million of them. They're mm. called alveoli. Mm. And when you breathe in, oxygen goes in, mm -hmm. it exchanges with your bloodstream, so it can actually get to the, you know, the rest of your muscles and so everything. So you can live. Yeah, live and do fun things in the garage like karate and yeah. all that, right? <laughs> and so it's important, but what happens is sometimes it's actually a progression of the viral illnesses. Okay. So you can actually progress pneumonia by having like the flu or COVID mm -hmm. and it can inflame the lungs. They fill with pus and fluid mm -hmm. and therefore that's where you feel short of breath. Mm -hmm. You're not exchanging the oxygen that you need. Mm -hmm. You're getting fevers and coughs. Mm -hmm. uh, the walking part just means you're up and walking and you don't need to be hospitalized, mm -hmm. but it's still lingering there. Oh, okay. There's a spectrum of it where it can be really severe mm -hmm. and you might actually need to come into the hospital for supportive uh, antibiotics and other stuff too. And how is it that you you find out about pneumonia? Because you, I know pneumonia is more bacterial, typically. Typically speaking, yeah. yeah. And so we actually like to use chest x-rays for that, mm -hmm. right? So most pneumonias are bacterial. Mm -hmm. There are viral and very rarely fungal, but it's not something the average person has to think about. Mm -hmm. But we do do a chest x-ray. Mm -hmm. And so when you come into the hospital, very routinely, you'll actually do, see something like this. Mm -hmm. And when a practitioner looks at it, on the left side of the screen, so the right lung, mm -hmm. you'll actually see a lot of like white little schmutz in there. Yeah. We call that an opacity. And in the right spot, that's basically a pneumonia. So oh, okay. that helps us make the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. That's kind of that pus and, and everything else that the uh, x-ray showing us. Okay, right on. Yeah. And so if you did have something like pneumonia, that's something that could be treated by antibiotics. That's right, yeah. But if you have a viral infection, not, not the so case. much, yeah. And I kind of danced around that a little bit. Mm -hmm. While we did talk about the supportive care, mm -hmm. there's an old adage of like feed a fever, starve a cold. That doesn't really exist. Okay. You want to ultimately just stay well hydrated, right? Okay. Um, but when it comes to antibiotics, when we have pneumonia, because it's mostly bacterial, we treat that with antibiotics. Okay. It does not have an effect on viruses. Okay. And that's why we kind of try to avoid it. But it, because uh, antibiotics themselves have their own side effects, yes. right? So we have yeah. to be judicious in their nature. Okay, right on. Yeah. Now, you said the, the 
feed a fever, starve a cold, or yeah. a potato, potato. Um, what is it that we should do at home if we are feeling unwell and we're maybe not sure what we have? It's not so bad that we think yeah. we need to go to the hospital. And a lot of patients, and I think both with their kids and themselves, they, they don't want to kind of burden the system and go in. But mm. on the flip side, how do you know if it's too early or too late? Yeah. And, and by myself, I have definitely, I, I don't have a perfect answer. Mm -hmm. So maybe the, some guidelines can help. Yeah. I would say at the very minimal, certainly try those over-the-counter stuff like ibuprofen and Advil at first. Mm -hmm. See if that helps break the fever, stay hydrated. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling okay and you improve, good enough. But if it does progress or doesn't improve at all, mm -hmm. it's worth seeking medical care through a primary care practitioner mm -hmm. or going to the emerge and you can get an x-ray. Okay. And that alone can be helpful in kind of figuring things out. If yeah. you're concerned though, I would never dissuade someone from seeking care. Mm -hmm. I think there's just a lot of things patients can try before they go in. Mm -hmm. Things like cough syrup can be useful sometimes too to help with a cough, mm -hmm. but you know, you don't want to give it to kids less than six years of age. Okay. And that's really just symptom treatment. It's not going to expedite, you know, how quickly we recover. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And the last thing to kind of leave with is you can have a cough after an infection for weeks. Oh. And it sucks. Yes, it's the one. You know when it, you're like, I'm better, but why am I still coughing? Yeah, and just like hacking and you got this phlegm that comes up yeah. and that mucus and they think they have a, it, the color of the mucus doesn't really change much of our diagnosis. Mm -hmm. But when you're feeling that tightness in the chest, sometimes you can get a bit of inflammation that kind of lasts for a while. Mm -hmm. You might actually benefit from a puffer trying to open up those airways. Okay. So there's nothing wrong with seeking care because mm -hmm. maybe you do have something lingering there. Mm -hmm. But I think having someone to listen to your lungs, hearing if there's any wheezes or crackles, mm -hmm. getting a physical exam, having your vitals and getting a chest x-ray, that'll help unpack kind of what's going on in there. Okay, thanks so much, Dr. Frank. Thank that was you. great. Thanks for keeping us healthy. Yeah. Hey, Mary here. What did you think? Drop your comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the good stuff.